everyone, I'm Glory from Felicitas Travel and I'm gonna give you the best 10 tips for a successful trip to Egypt. We're gonna get right into it. I spent two weeks in Egypt and I visited Alexandria in the north all the way down to Abu Simbel in the south. And this is the best information that I could gather that I think will really help anyone plan a great trip to Egypt. Tip number six. Another really important aspect of Egyptian culture is tipping. You are going to be expected to tip everywhere for everything. But just know that a good amount for restaurants is just like anywhere else. Pay 18, 20% depending on how satisfied you were with the service. But when it comes to mostly everything else, you can pay anything from 20 pounds. Some places you can even pay like 10 pounds as a tip. Like if you go to a bathroom, there are bathroom attendants. Sometimes there won't be toilet toilet paper. I actually carried my own toilet paper. Let me show you. So there's this travel toilet paper. It works like a regular toilet paper. You can leave a little bit out and you just pull. This is really useful because um, sometimes you won't even find toilet paper in some places. And if you do, sometimes you have to pay extra and you always have to tip the attendant. So like 10 pounds is fine at a bathroom. There's tour guides in some places, unofficial tour guides actually. It's up to you if you want to use them, but they're going to be a little pushy sometimes in some places. They're just going to like explain something without you asking and then expect you to tip. Be aware of that. In those places, Places you can pay like 20 pounds you're gonna want you to tip more but if you can't don't pay more 20 pounds is fine it's really up to you but 20 to 50 pounds is appropriate in most cases that's what I would say is a rule of thumb but if you can and want to pay more then perfect go ahead some people will make a face if you tip 20 pounds and they expect it to be paid more just because you're a tourist that's their problem. If you can't pay more, you can't pay more. You're expected to tip everywhere. Especially like hotels, restaurants, you know, attendance at cruises, everywhere. When in doubt, tip. That's what I would say. Even when you pay for a service, like even your tour guide, you're paying them, right? It's included in the package, but you're expected to tip them. If you have them for a few days, wait till the end to tip them, I would say. And it's up to you in that case. I would say, yeah, 50 pounds is not good. I would say I paid an average like 200 pounds when I really liked the tour guide probably the most I paid was like 500 pounds, 600 pounds because I really really liked the person and I could do it but if you can't afford to do that then 100, 200 pounds it's tipping. You're still giving extra money you know what I mean so give what you can afford be fair but yeah just give what you can afford. Tip number seven do not be afraid to haggle. Some people might not know what haggling is actually. I mentioned it to a friend and she didn't know what haggling even was. She's also from the United States like me. Let me Google the actual definition. Haggle. To dispute or bargain persistently, especially over the cost of something. I cannot stress this enough. You're gonna have to do it. It's part of the culture even. Most people are not gonna give you a fair price up front. Even tour guides will tell you like, oh, that's not a fair price. You need to bargain. You need to haggle. Actually, I'm gonna tell you something that one of my tour guides explained to me because I, I asked him. I was just genuinely curious. I was like, why do people do this? Why do they inflate prices that way? And he explained that a lot of these vendors a lot of people in Egypt um, have been really affected by corruption in their government. They don't get paid enough to get by. And since Egypt is a country that receives so many tourists, they know that a lot of people don't know the actual prices. A lot of us, especially if you're from the West, we are not used to haggling. We go to a store, if this bottle of water says five dollars, that's what you pay. You're not gonna go to the counter and be like, can I pay you 250? You don't do that here, but you're gonna have to do that in Egypt. Um, trust me. Do some research. I did some of that. Learn the prices of main things that you might need, like food, water. Food is really cheap though. I had someone try to sell me a bottle of water for like 50 pounds when it was actually 20 That for that size. All I said was, I looked at him and I went like, that bottle of water is 20 pounds. And he was like, fine, fine, fine. You know, so learn prices ahead of time. Don't be afraid to ask to pay for less. I mean, be fair, because at the end of the day, like I said, these people do this not because they're bad people, it's just they don't make enough money. So sometimes what I did, especially with clothes, even though I knew I was paying more than they would charge an Egyptian person, a local, because they knew I was a tourist, 
I was okay with paying a little more because at the end of the day, it was still cheap for me, right? Like if something was 300 pounds, it was still cheap for me even if that person was making maybe like 20%, 30% more than they would selling it to a local. I was okay with that because to me it was cheap, for them it was more. If I could help in that way, that's fine. So, you know, you can be fair, but also don't let someone completely take all your money that way because not all of us are rich. Like, I'm not a rich person. I work very hard for my money too. But just be aware of that. Be aware of the, of the of that reality. Because I met people like other tourists, other female travelers actually, who, ooh, people really took advantage of them. They had no idea of the prices and never researched and they paid so much money for either tours or souvenirs or clothes. There was this one lady that was like, I don't even know what I would have done if I hadn't paid for my ticket back because I am all out of money. And I felt really bad for these women because I get why some Egyptian people are doing that like in the markets and stuff, but at the same time it's like, these weren't rich ladies, these were working class people. So just be informed, just be informed and be fair. Oh, also another important thing, tour guides are paid a percentage to take you to certain stores. Some will tell you that up front. So if a tour guide takes you to like a jewelry shop and they're like, oh, I'm going to take you to this jewelry shop. They have the best jewelry. I know the owner. They're going to give you a good price. Know that they're receiving a percentage. Some will be upfront and honest and tell you that. They'll be like, listen, you don't have to buy anything. I will get a percentage if you do, but it's up to you. Some will do that, but some will not. Some will just be like, oh, this is the best place and actually be a little pushy. Just know that they're going to receive a percentage and you're not obligated to buy from these places, especially if you don't like the price, if it's um, above your budget. Tip number eight, be open-minded and respectful. So what do I mean by that? It's important to have an open mind wherever you travel in the world. That is just part of traveling because you're going to experience other cultures and you're going to be visiting a country that is not your country. What I mean by that, you are a guest. Just like you visit someone and you're a guest at their home, it's the same concept. It's sad that I have to say this, but I do have to say this because some, some people just, I don't know, I don't want to say entitled, but that is what it is. Sometimes as Americans, I feel like some of us can be entitled. And even if you can't speak Arabic, learn a few words, learn a few greetings. That, that goes without saying, but you know what I mean. Learn how to say thank you and please, and be open to people because even if you can't speak with people, if you can't understand them, you can still communicate. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Like, I actually had really nice experiences with locals. For example, if you see one of my videos, I'm actually gonna leave the link here somewhere, explaining what happened to me at a train station with Arabic ladies that could not speak English and I cannot speak Arabic, and yet we were able to like form a brief little friendship. So yeah, be open to people, be open to the new experiences, you know, like I even even had one of my tour guides invite me to go celebrate his son's birthday at his house with his family and it was like one of the highlights of my trip. Ask questions, do a little research before going there on the customs, don't be afraid to ask questions on how to do things appropriately I guess and even if you see things that you don't like or agree with, Keep it to yourself, man. Like, this is a country you're visiting. You're not here to, to change anything. That's the reality of it. And speaking about being open, ask locals where they eat. This is one of the best tips I can give you, especially if you're a foodie like me. You already know I'm a foodie if you watch my videos. I actually uh, review international snacks. I'm gonna leave a link here somewhere. So yeah, whenever I go to a country, that's one of the main experiences I want to have. I want to see what people eat. I want to experience new flavors, new textures, and different ways of cooking stuff. I just, I love food. Even if you don't love food that much, you can still learn a lot from what people eat and how people eat in other countries. So try to experience that at least once. I, I did it way more than once. Like I, I asked so many people, you know, whenever I arrived at a different town, I, whenever I had the opportunity, I would ask people, hey, what is the best place you recommend? And you can even ask, you know, like, hotel clerks or like a tour guide that you have or someone even on the street like whoever it is just ask a local what is the best place to eat what what is the place that most people love around here and trust me you're gonna find gems i mean 
There was this dish, koshari. It was one of the best things I've ever tried. It was like comfort food. It was amazing, it, and it was nutritional, by the way. It had pasta, it had lentils, it had spices, it had crunchy onions, it had tomato sauce. It had everything that is good in this world. The textures were amazing, the flavors were amazing. I, and also, it is ridiculously cheap. Like food in Idris is very, 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 very cheap. If you go to a really fancy restaurant, which I only did really once, I think. I went to one in Cairo, right next to the pyramids. Even that, the whole bill couldn't have been more than $35, including tip. It was like 35 to 40, something like that. But that's what you would pay for a simple meal at a restaurant here in New York City, so. I'm telling you man, the food is cheap and if you're a foodie, you're gonna like Egypt. And my final tip before this, this camera's dying on me. Tip number 10, how to dress for Egypt. Now, this is a very important topic, especially if you like to travel light like me. I only do carry on when I travel. I do not like carrying anything else in a small suitcase and a backpack, that's it. So if you're like me, you're gonna wanna watch my video where I explain everything that has to do, because yes, this deserves the whole video, everything that you will need to dress in Egypt appropriately for the sun, for the heat, to look cute as well, because I don't know about you, but I like looking fashionable when I travel, I just do. And also in a way that is respectful to their culture, because you can't just go there in booty shorts and something like this, you can't. Some people do, but it's just so disrespectful to their culture and to their religion. Just just don't do it. You can still dress cute. I'm gonna show you how. I actually went with only six outfits and I was able to mix and match for the two weeks I was there. Six outfits was more than enough. I only bought like one dress while I was there and that's it. So if you wanna watch my video, uh, you're gonna see the goofiest side of me in that video, but it's, it's, I'm proud of that video. It's very educational. A lot of people have told me that um, it really helped them pack, even for other countries that weren't Egypt, so you might want to watch that. And yeah, this is the last tip. That was the last tip. But if there's anything else that you might want to ask me, you can drop a comment below. Or if you just enjoyed the video and want to comment on that, um, you're welcome to. Also, if you want to see any of the pictures that I took in Egypt, I don't know, for inspiration, I'm going to leave my Instagram handle somewhere around the screen and also on the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, please subscribe, hit like, share, comment, all of the good stuff, and see you on the next one.